All right, uh, in this third screencast, I want to talk about calculating uh, partial molar entropy and uh, partial molar um, Gibbs free energy, uh, the component I in an ideal gas mixture, and then also what that means for delta S of mixing and delta G of mixing uh, for an ideal gas. Uh, so before we proceed, just to summarize what we have done so far, uh, is so in our first screencast, we showed that partial molar volume in an ideal gas is just equal to molar volume. We introduced the concept of partial pressure, where the partial pressure of component I in an ideal gas mixture is just the pressure that would be exerted by component I if all other molecules were magically deleted from that system, keeping the total volume constant. And so PI is just equal to YI times P. Okay, And uh, I'm going to make a note here that I'm going to drop the superscript of IG. Again, we're only talking about ideal gas mixtures. Um, and so um, I'm just not going to write the IG because we're only dealing with ideal gases. Okay, so that's partial molar volume of an ideal gas, uh, partial pressure of component I uh, in my ideal gas mixture. And then we uh, applied the Gibbs's theorem. So Gibbs's theorem told us that, you know, in an ideal gas mixture, for an arbitrary property F uh, other than molar volume, F bar I at TP and YI is just equal to pure component value at the same temperature. Uh, but a pressure um, PI equal to the component's partial pressure in that mixture. <clears throat> and so using that, we found that H bar I, um, and so we'll say at TP and YI, partial molar entropy is just equal to the molar value at T, okay? Because for an ideal gas, uh, enthalpy is, uh, is only a function of T, it's independent of P, and that led to delta H of mixing is zero. We also had that U bar I, okay, the partial molar internal energy was likewise just equal to the molar value at the same T, because internal energy is also independent of pressure or volume, is only a function of T, which led to delta U of mixing is equal to zero. Okay, so here we're going to look at um, entropy um, and then Gibbs free energy. Okay, and so how we're going to get entropy, okay. Okay, is we're going to be a little creative, right? So first thing is Gibbs's theorem would tell us that the partial molar entropy of component I, okay, at TP and YI is going to be equal to SI at T and a pressure equal to its partial pressure uh, PI. Okay. Now what's different for entropy is that. Um, we showed back in chapter five, right, our differential for entropy of an ideal gas was CP um, over T dT uh, plus R over P dP, right? So for an ideal gas, entropy is full, a function of both temperature and pressure, right? It's not just a function of T. So we need to account for both temperature and pressure, okay? Uh, so Gibbs's theorem tells us that S bar I at TP and YI is equal to SI at T and PI. Okay, delta S of mixing, okay, I know is equal to sum over I, YI, S bar I minus SI. Okay, so looking at this, it's important to keep track of functional dependencies. So this would be sum over I, YI. Okay, so I mix at constant temperature and pressure. So this would be S bar I at T, P, and Y, I minus S, I at uh, T and P. So Gibbs's theorem then tells us, okay, that S bar I at T, P, and Y, I, okay, is equivalent to, all right, can we replace that with S, I at T and P, I, okay, minus this is SI at T and P. Okay, cool. So, how I'm going to get this is I'm going to go back to our expression from chapter 5. Okay, so for component I, I have the DS ideal gas, okay, is equal to CPI ideal gas over T DT plus R over P DP. So now what's key is these two states are at the same temperature, okay? They're at the same temperature, okay? So dt would be zero. So if I want to calculate the difference in entropy between those two states at the same temperature, but a different pressure, 
right? All they need to worry about is this r over p dp term. So I would get then, if I were to integrate from pi to p of dsi ideal gas, okay, that'll be equal to the integral from pi to p r over p dp, and so that'll be equal to r log p over pi, okay, or I can write that as negative r log pi over p, okay. And what's even more interesting about this expression is pi is just yi times p, okay. So this is then equivalent to negative r log yi, okay. And again, all I use is that pi is just yi times p. So the change in entropy, okay, and okay, so just to you know further express this, this term, so this is then si at t and p minus si at t and pi is equal to negative r log yi, okay? Or if I want to flip things around, okay, si at t and pi um, minus si at t and p is equal to positive r log yi, okay? Let's see, hold on, I gotta make sure I'm uh, making sure I'm getting everything right. So that's P over PI. So I flipped it negative R log PI over P. And so that's negative R log YI. So this is SI T and P minus SI T and PI is negative R log YI. So if I flip it, SI at T and PI minus SI at T and P is equal to positive RT log YI. Okay. Oh, I just need to. I um. So hang on a second. I goofed up a negative sign somewhere. Okay. So this is good. So here I have SI T and PI minus SI T and P. And so what I did here is I integrated from pi to p. So this would be pi to p. Oh, so oh, I messed up my equation from chapter 5. This is cp over t dt minus r over p dp. So this is negative r over p dp. So this would be negative r over p dp. So that's a negative r log p over pi. Flipping would be a positive r log pi log pi over p, positive r log yi, okay? So again, my <coughs> error was going back to chapter 5, uh, I forgot the negative sign here, okay? I had a positive and not a negative. So si at t and p minus si at t and pi is positive r log yi, or if I want to flip it around, right, it just flipped the signs, okay? So I get the si t and pi minus si t and p, is equal to negative r log yi. And then doing essentially Gibbs's theorem in reverse, I would get that s bar i at t, p, and yi, which is equivalent to si t and pi, um, minus si at t and p is equal to negative r log yi. Okay, and um, which term do we want to look at first? Well, First thing of interest then is just s bar i at t, p, and y i is equal to s i at t and p minus r log y i. Okay. All right. So now we have an expression for our partial molar entropy of component i in an ideal gas mixture is equal to pure component value at the same t and p minus r log y i. So what's interesting about this is in the pure component limit, so in the limit that, say, component i goes to 1, log 1 is 0, that term goes away, and we just get in the pure component limit, my partial molar entropy is just equal to pure component value at the same t and p. Makes sense. For all other conditions, yi is going to be less than 1, and so this term will be negative. So negative of negative, this term will be positive. Okay, so in general then, we find that my partial molar entropy of component i uh, and my mixture is going to be greater than pure component molar volume at the same 
pure component molar value at the same T and P. So partial molar entropy in my mixture, the effective entropy of component I in the mixture is greater than its pure component value at the same T and P. Cool. Okay. The next thing is, if we go back here, okay, and we plug this into our expression for delta S of mixing, okay, what do we get? Okay. So we get delta S of mixing is equal to sum over I, uh, Yi, and then we had S bar I minus SI, those are at the same T and P, so that's SI, S bar I minus SI. So it's going to be equal to negative R sum over I, Yi, log Yi. So delta S of mixing is equal to negative R sum over I, Yi, log Yi. Okay, so again, log yi, so in the pure component limit, <clears throat> so the limit that uh, y1 goes to 1, this log 1 is just 0, and we get delta s of mixing 0. But for all other cases, so when yi is um, less than 1, this will be negative, so this term will be positive, right, and we get the delta s of mixing is always positive, right? Cool, okay, it's always positive, and what's interesting and cool is essentially it's just a combinatorial term. So if I think about taking a, a box of uh, an ideal gas, so pure component 1 at T and P, a box of uh, an ideal gas of pure component 2 at the same T and P, and I mix them to form a third system composed of component 1 and component 2 at the same T and P, you know, what has changed is, right, in the system molecules don't interact and don't take up space. But if I look at that mixture and I have supervision, I can distinguish between the molecules and compo of component 1 and component 2. So that mixture, you know, why delta S of mixing is positive is there's more unique configurations available uh, to my system, right? I can swap, say, a molecule of component 1 and 2, and I've just, you know, made a, a new uh, configuration for, for that system, right? Cool. Now to get G, there's a couple of ways we can get G. Uh, an easy way and a hard way. Well, well, they're both relatively easy, okay? But I would think about, you know, this easier route, okay? So, you know, one route would be we could go back to chapter 5 and um, we could look at our uh, expression for the differential of G. The other just is just, you know, G is equal to H minus TS. So delta G of mixing is just delta H of mixing minus T delta S of mixing, okay? Remember, we're mixing a constant temperature and pressure, okay? So delta G of mixing then for our ideal gas is equal to, well, delta H of mixing was just zero, okay? Delta S of mixing was negative R sum over I, YI log YI. So delta G of mixing is going to be a positive RT sum over I, YI log YI, okay? And so now delta G of mixing, okay, so we have log YI. Okay, yi is always going to be less than 1. It's going to be, um, this term is going to be negative. So delta G of mixing will always be negative. The pure component limit is 0, but otherwise delta G of mixing will always be negative, right? So if, uh, if I'm taking a beaker of pure component 1, or a box of pure component 1, box of pure component 2, and I mix them, uh, the Gibbs free energy that results in systems could be lower, and so it's going to be a spontaneous mixing process, right? So mixing of those two components will be uh, spontaneous. It's demixing, which is not spontaneous, and why separation processes are expensive. Okay, and if we were to take this, you know, a step further, okay, well, delta G of mixing would be equivalent to sum over I, YI, times G bar I minus GI, say partial molar Gibbs free energy, molar Gibbs free energy, right? These are at the same temperature and pressure, mixing at the same T and P, okay? Well, that has to be equivalent to this expression that I'm going to rewrite is sum over I, yi times rt log yi. Okay, and all I've done is we're mixing a constant temperature and pressure, so rt is just constant, so I could just as well bring it into the sum. Okay, so both of these equations are correct. Okay, and so since they're both correct, okay, they must be consistent with each other. So it must be then that G bar I minus G I is equal to R T log Y I. Okay. Again, you could get to this from our using Gibbs's theorem 
that, okay, let me write out functional dependence. So um, you know, this is g bar i then at t p and y i minus g i at t and p is equal to r t log y i. Okay, so you know we just showed this by relating g to um, s and h, but you could as well just have well gotten this where um, using Gibbs's theorem, g bar i at t p and y i is equivalent to g i at t and p i. And then you could have gone back to our fundamental equation from chapter 5 for g, just like we did for h, uh, and worked out uh, this expression. Okay? This, I just think, is a little more straightforward uh, and easy. Okay? Okay? But then rearranging, right, we get that g bar i, partial molar Gibbs free energy of component i in my mixture, is equal to g i plus r t log y i. Okay? And you know, again, this would be at T and P. So let me write T and P. Okay. So partial molar Gibbs free energy of component I in a mixture um, at a given temperature, pressure, and composition is just pure component value at the same temperature and pressure plus R T log Y I. Okay. Cool. Okay. And so uh, when I'm dealing with the mixture, I could just as well use uh, chemical potentials here. Okay. And the very last aside I'm going to make is that if I were to look at, say, this expression, right, I always say whenever I see a uh, change in Gibbs free energies at, at the same temperature, I think about uh, fugacity, right? And so G bar I at T P and Y I minus G I at T and P, okay, would be equivalent to R T log F I. Okay, at TP and YI minus FI at TMP. So pure component uh, fugacity at TMP, fugacity of component I in a mixture at TP and YI. Okay. Now, when I look at my fugacity terms, it's a matter of uh, the fugacity of component I in an ideal gas mixture is just equal to partial pressure, or in a pure component system, it's just equal to P. And so what you would find is that's equal to RT log uh, PI over P, which gets us to RT log YI. Okay, so this is something that we'll um, look at fugacity in, in uh, mixtures in, um, I believe, chapter 10, right, when we start to talk about paper liquid coexistence in more detail. Um, but, right, I could just as well have shown this just by using our definition of um, fugacity. Cool. Okay, but that's the end of our uh, series of screencasts on Chapter 9.